Hey everybody, let's continue making this uh, pillar. So I'm going to do something cool that we can do. So if you've just done your revolve and you've got this shape, you can go ahead and hit your Bezier curve here. And you'll see that this turns magenta, which means it's connected to this curve still. So if I right click right on top of the curve and get the control vertice, I can grab this vert here and I can just pull this up like so and the model will just start to follow along with it as you can see and if I want to add like a little bit of a taper to the curve all I have to do is pull that in a little bit so that's pretty cool um, if you wanted to actually have the curve uh, actually curved uh, you don't have to do this next thing but I'll just show you if you right click over the curve okay so I'm getting over the mesh there Let's do that again. Right click over the curve and go curve point. And then you click on the curve and start dragging. You'll see that there's this point that pops up. And I can. I accidentally deselected it. So, yeah, there it is. All right. So I can click it again and just keep dragging. I want to click it towards the middle, about right there. I can come in here into curves and say insert knot. So where's that insert knot? And now that I've done that, where that little spot was that I put, there should be an extra um, curve there. And now you can go and do something like that or taper it in. Just a little cool add on. Um, so I'm going to just do that that in just a little bit so this has a little bit of a taper to it so that looks kind of neat um the ancient greeks actually did that they actually uh would taper these things so that the optical illusion of it would um there's an optical illusion that happens where it looks like uh lines start to curve and so they would actually taper these things in a way so it got rid of the optical illusion it's actually pretty genius Okay, so we've got that, and let's say we are uh, wanting to, let's go into, um, we're wanting to extend this object, okay? Um, so, so now let's go ahead and move this piece right here, and we have it referenced here, so let me take it off reference. Um, this makes it so you can't, you can see it, but you can't select it. Template makes it so you can see just the outline. Uh, and then obviously that's the visibility. So um, I'm going to take this and just first thing I'm going to do is zero out the transformations. So if I ever want to move it back, I can just put zero in there and it'll move back. But I'm going to take this up here and I'm going to use this second part of this reference right here to do the top piece. And we'll do a little bit more curve modeling and then a little bit uh, a little bit of poly modeling so um what i'm going to do then is let's get the grid back up let's make sure we can see that and oh that was convenient i actually pulled this right up to like a grid line so that's going to work really nicely so what i'm going to do is go back to my curves and turn on my snap as a curve and then for this one, I'll snap one in the middle, and then I'll snap one, two. It's going to want to, you know what, let's, yeah, let's just snap it right there. That would be fine. We can change it later. Now I'll turn this off, and I'm just going to approximate what's going on there. So we've got like this little uh, loop that comes out, and then it goes back in, and then there's another so it kind of comes out again, like so, like so. And again, remember, you could always adjust this stuff later. So if you don't like what you did, it's not um, locked in to place forever. Um, I'm going to undo that. So just hit Control Z. I'm going to single click there. And now I'm going to go like this. And I'm kind of eyeballing it at this point. Um, so you can see what happens if I put it if I click too close to where I pull up the handles. Um, that's okay though. Uh, I'll show you what I'm going to do in a second. So I'm going to kind of approximate where this is going to go. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect because we can go back and change it later. 
at this point right now though I'll put my snap back on and I'm just gonna snap that back here so I'll hit W or Q either one and let's make a few adjustments here so for this one since these were really close oops let's turn the snaps off let me just pull that down like so actually you know what I'm gonna do here um, let's pull this to like the apex like I did with the other ones so that'll be better and we'll use this sharpen that's how I should have done it so sometimes you know um, when you're doing something new you need to adjust it and that's why they give you those tools to adjust it this one here I'm gonna pull that down just a little bit so I can take this and I'm gonna hold X on my keyboard so this time you'll see if I hold X it snaps that on and I'll just pull my uh, my widget down to that point right there and it will actually snap it um, in in the one axis that I was pulling on so we can go like this I can take this whole thing and kind of move it down so it's more round and these look kind of wonky let's just move these around a little bit again it doesn't have to be 100% perfect but it's all about you know if you really get into modeling obviously you want to you know you want to try to do it the best you can so you can work at it you know you can get a job at it because you really love doing it but um, you know, you also have to take in account how uh, how close is anybody going to get to this? Will they see all this detail? You know, these are all things we're thinking about. All right, so now that I've got that, I'm going to go to object mode, select that, and my revolve should be set at the same settings. I can go like that. If I go to my um, perspective view, you can see here that we've got like that basically capped off because this is going to go right into it. I can go to the edge again, right click and drag, double click and just move that up a little bit. If you want to hold V, you can literally snap it to like the vert right at the bottom. So it's perfectly aligned. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to jump ahead and show you how you can combine these two pieces together. So I'm going to just, I'm going to grab that hold shift grab this and then I'm going to go to mesh and just combine and so now these two pieces are combined together and um, they'll have no more history on them from the uh, from the curves like the curves won't affect them anymore um, but just to make sure I'll delete my history so that um, we don't have anything any straggling history or anything so now this this top part here or the bottom part, um, we can just basically make blocks for those. Uh, you can make that as intricate as you like. If you want to make it look like the actual reference, it's fine. I'm gonna actually blow this up like this. Move it down a little bit. So if I like the width of um, this block, I'm gonna show you a little trick. So if we go down to here, so if I like this width going, you know, the up and down in the Y direction, um, I can use my scale tool and just scale it on this axis to basically get it. It'll keep that uh, Y axis the same and just affect the Z and the X axis. axis. And then we can just duplicate this. Control D. Let's pull it up here. Hit F on the keyboard. That's a good idea to go into the front view. Hit F. And then make sure that lines up nice. About right like so. And this is one of those areas where you want to make sure that you, you got it lined up good because we're going to combine these um, and then duplicate them around for uh, the rest of our project. Okay, so let's select this. Shift select this. Shift select this. And then we can just do that same combine thing again. So mesh menu combine. We'll delete the history and you can see um, obviously I probably want my pivot to be down at the base um, but let's move this up so it looks like it's sitting on the ground and we can come here and just a middle mouse dragging again uh, with this axis highlighted so I can still adjust it when I'm close here allows you to do that 
and then we just go ahead and hit D on the keyboard to move the pivot and hold X and then you can snap it down to the bottom and hit X again or, I'm sorry D again and then um, now you basically have your pillar finished um, you don't have to make this exact pillar you can make different pillars you can you know any kind of profile that you can follow um, but this is a basic Doric pillar uh, let's see here I think that's probably good for this one let's zero this out put that back where it was just for the heck of it um, so a little file cleanup uh, I would go ahead and just uh, put those in a layer call that curves because you still want to keep them in case you need to use them later uh, but what you might want to do is just hide them so they're not muddying up the scene um, let's see here, what are we missing? That's the ref. Okay, so the ref we can hide. Turn that to a ref as well. And then this is the actual pillar. So pillar underscore dork. And let's make sure we zero that out and delete the history. And now we've got a nice pillar. Sweet. All right. Thanks for watching and happy modeling.